Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, President of Digital Anarchy. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about batch processing within Aperture. While this is technically not a new feature for Primat, the way Aperture approaches it is really great for the way Primat works. Not only can you do traditional batch processing, which is basically taking all of your photos and just doing them all at once, you can use Aperture to go through those photos one by one, make changes, color correct, deal with any problems in the background, change the backdrop, and then click OK and have Primat process all of those at the very end. You don't have to wait, you don't have to do one, process it, do the next one, process it. You can just do all of the changes all up front and then let Primat do all the batch processing at the very end. And so this allows you sort of the best of both worlds. You can go through and customize each photo and still get the benefits of batch at the end. So it's a really powerful way of working with Primat, and it's something that is only available within Aperture. Photoshop does not have a way of doing this. And so let's dive into it and see how it works. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our library, which in this case is the batch tutorial. And what we're going to do is select all of our photos. Now in this case, I've only got four photos. Makes the tutorial a little bit simpler and won't take quite as long. But we've tested this with hundreds of photos and it works just as fine with 400 photos as it does with four. And as you'll see, it's a very time-saving way of dealing with photos that you really want to look at one-on-one one -on -one, but don't want to go through the process of having to render after looking at each photo. So let's see how this works. So we've selected all the photos in our library, and we're going to go up to the Photos menu, go to Edit with Plugin, and click on Primat. Now, batch processing in Aperture works one of two ways. Now, if we just want to apply these settings to all of our images, we could just click OK, and we'd be done with it. That's traditional batch processing. That's basically how Photoshop works. You point Photoshop at a group of folders, and it just processes every image within that folder, but you don't get to do any customized settings. You tell Photoshop what settings you want, and it applies it to every photo in there. Now, in some cases, that's great. With Primat, it works okay, but it's a lot better if you can actually go through individually, check out each photo beforehand. Most of the photos won't need any adjustments, but you'll have some that do, and this allows you to go through each image, make sure it looks great, and then process everything at the end. All right, so let's get into this. So in this case, I'm going to use a different background. I'm going to grab my backdrop here and click on the Move to Front button, the big F. And you can see that with this image, I have a little bit of color correction that needs to be done. Her hair has a little bit of green in it. I can grab our Spill Minus tool and click on one of those green areas. It's going to extract that green color from her hair and does a pretty nice color correction. You might not be able to notice it, but I can. But there's a little bit of grungy noise here, and if I grab my clean background tool and click over that, in my box, you'll notice that that improves the background just a little bit. So that gives us a really nice image for this shot. And so now the great thing that we can do in Aperture is just move to the next one. So I'm going to click on this forward button up here. These buttons are really essential. They allow you to move forward and backwards through the images that you have selected. So by clicking on forward, I will go to the next image. And in this case, I'm going to change the background. Again, select my background over here and click move to front. Gives us a nice outdoorsy uh, type of background backdrop there. And this image looks pretty good as is, so we really don't need to make any changes to it. All I have to do is click on the forward button, and it's going to load up the next image in Primat. And in this image, I don't have to do anything at all, so I'm just going to click on forward once again. So you can see how this would be pretty fast if most of the images don't need any retouching, don't need any adjustments, take a glance at them, and just keep hitting that forward button. Now with this image, if we take a look at the original image by clicking on the front view option over here, we can see that the key has actually caused some color problems in her hair. Her hair does not originally look like that. So this is one example where auto mask didn't work. 
And so we're going to have to go back to the tried and true method of doing things manually. I'm going to grab my step one here and just click on the background. That's going to create my initial key, go to clean background, clean off some of the uh, noise that I have here in the background areas, and then do the same thing to the foreground. Take a look at my mask. Actually, it's a pretty nice job of masking out the foreground, masking out my subject. So now we have a much better key. If I take a look at the front, you'll notice that her hair, her dress, all look pretty much as it was in the original shot, and we're good to go. Now, of course, you can do all the other things that you normally do in Primat. We can position the backgrounds, we can position the subject, we can scale the background, we can do all sorts of color correction. All of the traditional Primat tools are there, and you can do that to each and every photograph. But usually, if you have a bunch of well-shot photographs, you're not going to have to do that to most of them. It's only going to be a small percentage that actually need any adjustment. And so being able to go through one by one like this is a really powerful workflow. And so now I'm going to click OK. And you can imagine that if I have 100 different images, you notice I can move through them pretty quickly and get this type of thing done. And now all the rendering is going to be saved up for the very end. So now that I, when I click OK, it's going to take all the adjustments that I just made to all four of these photographs and then do all those in a batch process. So if you have hundreds of images, this, will probably, this, this part will probably take a while. And so you'll want to leave the machine rendering for an hour or two. Or if you really have hundreds of images, possibly a lot longer than that. But that's all time that you saved by not having to look at each individual photo and render them out after each one. And now I'm back in Aperture, and you can see that I've got all the Primat affected photos next to the originals. So you don't actually destroy the original. These are all created as versions. The masters remain untouched. So that's another really nice thing about Aperture. So if the client decides at some point, well, you know, I really want a different background. I really like this blue background. Well, you can just reapply Primat to the original image and make that change. It's pretty simple. But the really powerful thing about this was, as you saw at the very end, all the processing happens at the very end. It allows you to move very quickly through each individual photo, make the adjustments, and then all the processing happens at the tail end. So you can move on, let the computer do its thing, go get lunch or go home for the night or what have you. And you don't have to wait around and spend all that time. So it's a huge time saver by being able to go through and use Batch in this way. And again, this is something that's not available in Photoshop. It's really just a feature of Aperture which is just incredibly powerful. And so we're really happy that Primat's being able to take advantage of that to the degree that it is and really get the full benefit from it. So I encourage you to play around with batch mode, both the traditional batch mode of just open, selecting a bunch of images, opening Primat and clicking OK, and that will just process everything in mass, or the method that I've just shown here by going through each one individually and then letting the batch processing happen at the very end. So I encourage you to play around with that. And if you need more information about Primat itself, we have plenty of tutorials on digitalanarchy.com. They go over all the different tools and the different features within Primat. And so thank you for joining me, and see you in the next tutorial.